All right, we'll get started here and we're going to get started and people may join along the way and I appreciate your taking the time to be here with us. For those of you that don't know, I'm Kim Conoco and I'm the Executive Director at North Dakota Council on the Arts. Um, we're happy that you're here and uh, we are constantly uh, working to improve our systems and in particular our grant programs. We're trying hard to make sure that we can give you as much funds as possible. We're trying to make it easier to apply. We go every year and review our guidelines and our applications. So we appreciate your being on the call because you'll learn some new things. Um, uh, other staff that are here, uh, Brenna Laren, who is there and in Fargo, actually. She is our special projects coordinator. And the person who is going to be talking to you the most is Vanessa Voscule. And she is our program uh, manager for um, community arts access. And there have definitely been some changes in that category. So uh, Vanessa's gonna go through the process and then you make sure you just use the chat. Or again, if you can find your Zoom hand in there, which is, might be under, it's under reactions, I think. Oh, I could be wrong. You yes, don't have to. It is. Oh, it yes. Is. Raise your, it says, see, it says raise your hand. But you can also just type into the chat. Feel free. All right. Uh, Vanessa, are you all set or do you need me to talk for a minute more? She might need me to talk for a minute more. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say is that we're, um, there you are. Can you, are, can you, are you okay? Yeah. Um, not hearing you. You want to just say something? Hello, hello. Oh, no. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, one thing I'll just say at the beginning um, is, uh, again, just ask questions. We are here to help you. So there's not a big group, and we that will mean we can answer more questions than not, and we want you to be successful at that. All right, Vanessa. Program Officer for Community Arts Access, take it away. Yeah, hello everyone, welcome to the webinar for Community Arts Access. Uh, I've been the Program Officer uh, uh, at uh, for this program for a couple of years now, and uh, and uh, we are going to uh, go over uh, the program guidelines and uh, talk about uh, any updates to those guidelines and uh, how you can. Uh, uh, register and apply for the grant and then we'll uh, answer any questions that we have at the end uh, of of the of the discussion if you have any questions during you know certainly you know uh, feel free to chime in and we can uh, uh, address them uh, then or uh, later and uh, Vanessa I'll keep yeah. my eye on the chat for questions mm -hmm. but if you have them put them in there and we'll we'll get them answered okay sounds good uh um so I'm going to uh, just uh, go through uh, quickly just some uh, the the main updates to the grant program, which is uh, there's an increase in the uh, amount that's been awarded. It's now four thousand uh, dollars, and the and the match has been uh, decreased to twenty five percent, which means uh, that if you wanted to request the full four thousand uh, dollars, you would need to have total expenses that are. Or five thousand, uh, and for uh, this grant program, uh, uh, there are two tiers. There's tier one and tier two. Uh, tier one is for uh, applicants who are in uh, areas of North Dakota that are under thick six thousand in population, and for round two, it's uh, for over six thousand. Uh, and I, the reason I'm talking about that is because there is a uh, 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 for the the match, there is uh, half of that match, which is a thousand, can be used for in kind uh, for tier one uh, populations that are under 6,000. Uh, and then again, what, when we go through the program guidelines, I'll point that out. And so then you can have that also a visual, uh, <laughs> visual in your head uh, and uh, where you can also find that information. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so 
50% has to be cash for uh, tier one and 50% can be in kind or it can be all in cash. Uh, and then for tier two, it has, it's all in cash. Uh, and you can use, you know, uh, and, and when we go through the program guidelines, I can talk about what kind of sources of match you can use for that. Uh, the, uh, so that's the main update. Uh, uh, and for the, the grant program, uh, there's been a little bit of restructuring that we'll, we'll look at. And uh, also uh, uh, some uh, areas of where the uh, eligibility has shifted also a little bit. Uh, so any, any questions on any of that uh, as we move forward? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, share my screen and I'm just going to uh, share the, the website for Community Arts Access uh, on uh, North Dakota Council on Arts uh, website here. And I'm just going to make sure that you can all see that. Can you all see that? Okay, if anyone can't see it, please yes. let us know. Yes, yep. okay. All right. Uh, so here is uh, the, the website, and I just want to sh uh, share with you where you can access these guidelines. And something important to know, you can always call me, uh, and uh, we can uh, uh, send these to you in the mail if you would like. Uh, and uh, the guidelines uh, right here. So here it talks about the program. Uh, here's the application deadlines. Oh, this is the other update. Uh, so we have two uh, two rounds uh, this fiscal year. So we have a round one, and then can go through uh, starting July 1st, project dates, uh, go through July 1st through June 30th. And then there's also a round two, which is in the fall, which is a Monday, October 9th. And the, the project dates are a little bit different, November 1st through June 30th. Um, so the, mm -hmm. the end date's always June 30th. Uh, so we have two rounds this uh, fiscal year. And again, the minimum that you can request is... Uh, uh, 1250 and the maximum is 4,000 and there's a 25% match. And here's my contact information right here. Uh, Does it matter which round you apply for? I, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, if your project date is before November 1st, then it would matter. Uh, you would want to uh, apply in round one. It's uh, in June. It's in June every year. So yeah, that, and I think you're referring to your training seminar that you were speaking of, but that would be in round one uh, right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so here's, here's the, uh, you can go, you can go to grants and community arts access right there at the top of the page and you can uh, uh, scroll down here. And then you're going to open up this link here. It says program overview and application instructions. And right now, uh, these instructions, you just click on there and uh, it will open up, let's see, to a new page here. And then you will get, a. Uh, it'll be a PDF. Let me see if I can move this. Where'd it go? Oh, oh dear. Okay. Okay, excuse me. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's gonna open up to a new screen and uh, it'll uh, be downloadable here uh, as a PDF. And then you can uh, uh, save that to your desktop and then you'll have all the uh, application instructions on your uh, desktop. And you can print them out that way also. Uh, while you're going through the online application, you know, it might be helpful just to have it next to you uh, while you're um, applying. Uh, and so here are the guidelines and it, you know, it has my contact information here at the top and also the deadlines, uh, note the draft application review deadlines. So the first, uh, uh, deadline for that is April 7th. And so if you would like a draft review, uh, you can uh, send me an email by that date and then I can look over your application and, uh, give you some feedback, uh, about, uh, uh you know, anything specific that you have, or just in general, you know, if you just want a general feedback, you know, either way. Uh, I can give you some feedback over there. Uh, uh, and again, if you need an alternate application format, format, you know, just you know, just ask, and we'll we'll do the best that we can to get you something uh, that uh, will work for you. Uh, 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 so here is the, you know, the application instructions and just going over the website quickly. Here's here's downloads. You know, here's a couple different kinds of budgets. 
uh, tier one and tier two uh, bu budgets. Uh, if you're in tier one, you want to download the tier one budget. Tier two, you want to download the tier two one. And then this is uh, eligibility information. And again, this is how to apply. And we'll go back to that later. Uh, all right. So here's the, the here is the program overview. Uh, and here's just the contents. Uh, they've been put together in the same uh, uh, document this year, which is a, a little bit different of talk. I was talking about structuring earlier. Uh, so they've got here's the contents and here's the description. Uh, here's the goals uh, right here to promote knowledge, appreciation of the arts, and encourage groups to enhance quality of programming and to expand audiences in rural and urban areas, areas while building capacity. And so again, that's why that's uh, the grant is broken up into two uh, two uh, tiers, uh, so rural and urban areas. Uh, eligibility. So this is something to note here. Uh, an organization can only be the official applicant on only one application in this program. So uh, if you apply, you know, in, t in round one and you do not get the get get the grant, you can apply in round two, uh, but you can't uh, get two grants. So in one fiscal year. And uh, here is the, who here's who can apply. Uh, so we have a state tax exempt nonprofit organization, uh, nonprofit arts organizations, uh, you can have uh, state tax, uh, federally taxed exempt non-arts organizations and community education units, uh, public entities such as this unit of state, local and tribal government, and affiliate arts presenting or producing organization. And this might be a little bit uh, uh, confusing, but basically it's, uh, there's a description here about what that is. And it's, it's a division hosted within a, a tax exempt institution or public institution, such as an arts division of a city or tribal government or a public or nonprofit college or university or community service nonprofit. And so um, on, and so that's what that's what that would would be. So say you uh, were uh, Vanessa. Yeah, I think given the group that's on the call with us. Yeah, we're, we can just gloss over this. Yeah, part. that's what I was thinking. OK, yeah. so here's fiscally sponsored groups. OK, so all applicants must be in North Dakota and uh, have majority of arts programming services or activities take place in North Dakota and primarily serve engaged North Dakota audiences and participants. And uh, here's what this program funds. Uh, so arts activities, including, but not limited to arts festival exhibitions, performance series, touring performances or exhibits and standalone single discipline or multiple disciplinary arts projects, all forms. And uh, so it's basically it's it's our main project grant uh, at North Dakota Council on the Arts, and uh, and the program doesn't fund uh, activities or programs where teaching or learning is the outcome, or anything that takes part of a K through sixteen day school curriculum or activity. Uh, there are um, uh, uh, several. Um, uh, let's see here. So the application will be ineligible and, and you can look through these, you know, uh, if you were requesting funds for uh, any of these uh, items here or to support these type of activities, uh, the application will be in ineligible. Uh, and, uh, and one thing to note is that if you are a current grantee of institutional support or special projects grant programs, uh, you wouldn't be eligible for uh, community arts access. Um. And, uh, there yes. is a question um, mm -hmm. from Ashton. Would interactive yes. art activities for children be included in the list of what is not funded? Interactive art Arts. activity for children. Uh, would it, is it a, a workshop uh, situation? Is it a performance? Is it uh, So if it's a teaching situation. Situation, yeah then it is not eligible. Exactly, yes. So, yeah, so if it's, if you are, uh, or teaching or learning uh, or some sort of workshop, uh, it would not be an eligible uh, 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 application for this grant program. Uh, it's, this uh, program is focused more on, you know, performances or touring or exhibits or uh, uh, creation of arts. Uh, in festivals, uh, but teaching or learning or educational activities would not be eligible for this grant program. 
So the Native American beading, it 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 is um, well, and if it's particularly for play, the most important point is is that you're you're doing this with children and community arts access means that you're dealing with a community as a whole. So definitely children can be involved, definitely and should be. Um, but it, it's more about the community wide activities, not the teaching of children. We'll okay. keep going. We'll keep going. Okay. Uh, and here is on um, page uh, three here is where the grant award amount is and, uh, you know, where you can find information about the match. Uh, here's uh, where you can, the sources could be co coming from for those matches, uh, past surpluses, other grants, cash, earned income or revenue as planned to be raised specifically for the project. So uh, it's, it's uh, projected income, which is something important to note. So if it's not something you already have, it's cash, you could project that in your budget as part of your match. Uh, and again, for tier one here, uh, matching sources can include in-kind services. However, it can't be, be more than 50% of the total match. And then there's uh, some information here about, you know, what those uh, numbers would look like if you uh, were calculating what that uh, would be like for your budget. And, you know, again, if you have any issues, you know, certainly contact me. Uh, or questions, <laughs> or you, um, here's the review process, uh, you know, it goes into, you know, a review from, from the staff for eligibility and completeness, then we have, it goes through a panel process, uh, the, and then there's, here's the review criteria, uh, talks about, you know, the panel, you know, evaluates your application based on the review criteria, which is very important, we'll go through that a little bit later here in the application, and, uh, uh, and then uh, they review the applications in uh, two um, uh, populations, two um, two groups in a uh, tier one and tier one, tier two, uh, which is a uh, tier one is six thousand or less, or tier two is six thousand or more. Uh, and then you and, need to get it. And actually, Vanessa, if I could comment on that for a quick second, I think it's yep. important to understand. You know, we really do recognize th that. Uh, Urban areas and rural areas have different needs. They're affected by different things. So we always try hard to make sure that they're being reviewed. You're being reviewed with peers who are at, in the same group that you are in. Uh, yep. And something, uh, the panel score uh, to be re recommended for an uh, award by the panel, you need to, need to at least get a, a score of 60 out of 100. Uh, and then it goes into the board for approval. Uh, notification is by email. Uh, payment uh, is 80% at the top of the grant. And then at, uh, and then you request 20% after your final report submitted. Uh, and then uh, there's information about, you know, if uh, reporting uh, and uh, final reports. And, uh, you know, uh, if you receive a grant, you would need to uh, recognize North Dakota Council on Art uh, by using our logo and credit line on all uh, promotional material on, uh, of the funded activity. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions? Actually, I'm going to add something to that. Yep. If you guys have been getting funding from us for a while, you should definitely make sure that you're using the new NDCA logo, mm -hmm. not the old one. Yeah. Yes, we have we have a we have had a new logo for about two and a half three years now. But you would be surprised how much we still see our old logo out there. We're trying to make it go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, and then there will be instructions in the grant to word about how to you know uh, access you know the new logo and information on that. Uh, application instructions, how to apply here. Uh, here's the, the link is here and it's also on our website here. So who can apply? You know, we went through that. Uh, how to apply. There's also a link here. So if you, you know, uh, can re you can reach it inside the PDF, but you, uh, you also reach it here uh, online. Uh, and then there's uh, tutorials here about how to apply. Uh, and then there's some information about other grants that have been awarded from past fiscal years right here. Uh, so um, and when you apply, uh, you'll need to register 
Um, and uh, you will go to our online grant system. And, uh, and I'll sh show that what that looks like here. Basically, uh, you'll go to our home page here and then you'll uh, create a new account if you're a new applicant. And there, I have some instructions over here. You know, if you're returning or if you are uh, need assistance, you can call this line here or you can contact me. Uh, and then you create a new account or you log in and then uh, you have uh, you'll be in our online system then at that point uh, to uh, 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 apply. Uh, and uh, so the create new account here, I'll just simply uh, show you what it looks like. It's for organizations and individuals to apply. Uh, it has some uh, special instructions for individuals um, here. So if you're not uh, if you don't have an EIN, you would enter this information and then you uh, uh, register all of this information and then you'll get into your the online system from there. Uh, and here's the information about uh, how to get to the actual application. Uh, you can read through that. And then here is information about application support. So uh, if you need to have a draft review again, this here's, here's where you uh, have instructions to email the program officer, which would be me, and then uh, to get a, a review of your application. Uh, let's see. Uh, Say, should I go into the online application, Kim? Do you think? Why don't we go through first? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This and then. Okay. We'll see. Okay, so uh, so something to uh to note is that the, the application instructions basically follows the online application. So if you need uh some you know information. You know, about certain so about something, then you can refer to the uh, application instructions about how to uh, uh, register and how to apply to the uh, on online <laughs> application. So um, uh, something that is different this year is that uh, uh, we are uh, requiring everyone to have a, a SAM a unique entity ID. Uh, this is replacing the DUNS number, uh, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and that, that is for organizational. Yes, and it's for organizational applicants only. Uh, you, uh, it's important to understand you do not have to do a full entity registration, which can take some time uh, to go through that registration process. Uh, you just need the, the SAM UEI, uh, and there's... Um, uh, instructions inside the uh, application uh, to, for how to get that if you do not have that number. Uh, I do uh, recommend, you know, sooner the better to get this number because there's been some uh, backup with uh, timing for some people or... Uh, well, in explanation, yeah. what what mm -hmm. the federal government did was decide to move away from DUNS to SAM. Yeah. And they did this across the board for all federal organizations at exactly the same time. And I don't think they understood what the backlog was gonna be. So mm -hmm. it has unfortunately impacted our constituents in having to wait for the process. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do not have a SAM UEI and you are an organization, please do that as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, yep. And then uh it's it's uh it can be kind of a a challenging process too uh, for some people so if you have you know questions about that there is uh you know technical uh uh help on the actual website for that uh uh, uh sam unique entity id and and i guess i just would want to say this is one area where we cannot help you very much yes you yeah. kind of have to talk to them so if you haven't yet please start that process yeah it's it's a little tricky yeah yeah ndca receives uh, half our funding from the federal government so that requires our sub grantees uh to have this number uh for uh th those uh federal funds that we do receive uh and uh, so here we select the tier that you're applying to. Uh, there is some information that we're requesting about your mission statement, uh, uh, your, the history of your organization, kind of very briefly. You know, you know, what is your background? You know, uh, how have you, um, 
what's your structure and, you know, what kind of programming do you have? You know, this, this is not necessarily, uh, uh, scored by the panel, but it really helps the panel enter into, you know, you as an organ, as an applicant, as an, you know, uh, since, since, uh, since they might not know who you are, uh, and they, uh, score, you know, just based off of the application, you know, not off of, you know, uh, any other information. And then there's some NEA questions that are required for our reporting purposes here. Uh, if you are fiscally sponsored, uh, this is uh, information for you uh, about how, you know what information you need to uh, to apply as a fiscal sponsor. You would need a sponsor agreement, uh, and I don't think there's anyone here who's fiscally sponsored. But uh, and then you would also uh, need uh, Anita. You have a question. Well, yes. yeah, we are through that. Uh, I think it's the North Dakota Community Foundation. Oh, that's right. You We're are a Anita. Yes. C four yep. and not a 501c3. So yep. would the agreement and the tax letter that we supplied last year still be applicable for this year? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly. As long okay. as your agreement is current, uh, it, it would, it would, yeah, it would work for this year okay. also. Yep. Got you it. just want to make sure that they've got the, the UEI. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to send them an email like right now. <laughs> yeah, they would need a Sam UEI here, and Got then, uh, yeah, which would be, yeah, uh, yeah. And here's some information about uh, in fiscal sponsors. Uh, this is a new section uh, outcomes. Uh, it's uh, basically addresses how the applicant's outcome. Uh, uh, matches the program outcomes. Uh, and so I would read through this pretty thoroughly. Uh, and so it basically, we were simply asking you to, you know, in this kind of sentence or two, you know, what is, what, what is a distinct and measurable outcome for your proposal? And then you can have an, a second one if you'd like mm -hmm. also. Uh, and they must support one of the program outcomes. Uh, and so we have uh, four program outcomes here uh, that you can choose from that would uh, be matching your uh, applicant or proposal uh, outcome. And so, you know, grantees can change, expand, or enrich the ways they connect, connect to the communities or uh, communities with limited arts programming develop or expand the capacity to offer arts experiences to their constituents. Uh, North Dakotans participate in meaningful arts experiences that are not routinely available to them or North Dakota artists build meaningful relationships with audiences they aren't currently serving. Uh, so, uh, you can have one or one, or two of those, or, or you can have two outcomes that uh, also that just connect to one of the program outcomes. Uh, uh, either any, any situation would work for that. Uh, how would the outcome be evaluated? Uh, so if you're, you know, uh, having a festival of some sorts, and that's your, you know, how how would that be uh, evaluated uh, for? Yes, and then here, so for each project outcome, select a program outcome. Uh, so that would be in the online application. If you need any, have any questions or need assistance, please contact me and we can uh, discuss that more further. I can give, uh, offer some more, uh, you know, um, information about how to craft an outcome or uh, give you feedback about what you're working with currently. And if uh, you look, if you look at the, the following program outcomes, they're very broad. They're yeah. really about work you do in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you're all doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a question of what we're going to look for a little bit more is how are you evaluating what you're doing? How are you actually um, meeting those outcomes so that we can, whether it's increased attendance or whether it's through, um, you know, collection of information, people are doing a survey just to get a sense of, how do how are you getting some feedback? Okay. So we'll move on here. Um, and again, here's some uh, tips for outcomes and evaluations. Uh, this is a very good resource by the National uh, Assembly of State Arts Agencies, uh, organization that we work with uh, a lot. And uh, it's a very good resource. I, I recommend uh, clicking on that and taking a look at that uh, for some language and for some just some background and for information. Uh, this is this is also a restructuring of the grant program that's new. Uh, we're, we put the review criteria next to the narrative questions uh, because the main thing to do in the grant uh, 
is to answer the review criteria that the panel scores your application on. Uh, and uh, so we, we have your, we'll, you'll, you'll have your project title, you have a short, short description for your activity, you have a start date again. The start date uh, includes uh, publicized marketing efforts that you're going to be doing. Uh, that includes the NDC, the new NDCA logo and credit credit line. And then the project end date is uh, always has to be 6 30 2024. Uh, and then we go into the review criterion. Um, uh, there's four uh, basic re review criteria. Uh, there's, you know, and under each review criteria, there is like a, a sub criteria. And then uh, there, there's these bullet points here are for you to uh, address that criteria. Those are the questions that you would answer inside the application that would address that review criteria, which would uh, be scoring, uh, the, pan the panels would be scoring. So arts activity is the first review criteria. Uh, and then they have the sub criteria. So in, in, as an example, the description of the activity is clear and project collaborator, any project collaborators are making a commitment of resources. And so these are uh, what you would look at to, uh, you know, describe the activity and then if applicable, provide, provide a, a, a list of key activity partners. And then you would uh, uh, use that uh, those questions to answer the review criteria. Uh, so right now we have a one and a two for arts activity. Under community, we have one here. There's a one review here. There's a two evidence of community support and three accessibility needs of participants or audiences with disabilities are understood and addressed. And again, you read through these bullet points and answer those questions and uh, for that review criteria. Uh, I suggest, you know, Thoroughly looking at these bullet points and uh, answering the questions, you know, uh, and uh, try not to stray too much from from just answering the questions, uh, and be succinct and clear and and uh, in as as much as you can. Uh, you have a you know, character limit is something to note here. Uh, this includes spaces, and. Uh, uh, so if you're typing on a Word document, you note that you know you can only have two thousand maximum characters, including spaces. Uh, and here's a uh, fifteen hundred for arts activity, and uh, the online application will let you know that uh, you are over your character limit, and it will not let you submit to your application. So it's uh, something to note when you're looking through your narrative. Uh, and uh, here's general information about accessibility uh, information. You can contact one of our uh, 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 staff members here if you have some uh, uh, information you need or issue or trying to uh, resolve something uh, accessibility wise. Uh, this is a good person to contact here at, at the NDCA uh, about how to uh about how to get in, in contact with other resources or how to, um, you know, how to uh, also apply or, you know, just any questions about accessibility, you would contact Rhea or, um, and she'd be a good contact uh, for that. Uh, and the last one here, no, there's two more, ability. There's three criteria for ability. And again, the bullet points. And then evaluation, there are one, two, there are two uh, criteria. These, this one doesn't have a bullet point. It's just the criteria since it's being uh, about the outcomes that we do earlier in the application. Uh, I think that's also same for the budget. There's a lot of information about the budget, but then there's there is a little bullet point about um, uh, considerations for those who find these costs a barrier. Okay, so if yeah, there's, uh, two criteria under evaluation and then there's uh, uh some more information here about getting started a, a, a tip here about a project evaluation from again the national assembly of state arts agencies i would go here and some good information to support your uh the uh evaluation methods uh, for your project um uh, then is there any questions about just that i feel like i need to take a breath <laughs> Any questions? Okay, moving through. All right, so here we, we move on to the budget. So the budget, again, we have two budgets, one for tier one and two for two, tier two, because there's a little bit of difference, uh, you know, in the match. And so there's a, so we can download the correct uh, budget as applicable to your uh, 
uh, geographic location. Uh, here's information about uh, how to complete your budget, expenses, income. Uh, again, uh, here's North Dakota's meal per diem rate. You know, note these that uh, the gas reimbursement rate is 50 cents per mile. So when you're making your calculations, you know, you have to look at look at these kind of these little details in here. And uh, and when I'm doing a review of your application, I, I will make note of that for you. Um, if, if it's something different. So uh, government support, you know, income here, government, under government support, support, no, you can't use NEA or federal funds for the match. Uh, for state, you can't use other grants from NDCA. Uh, and then here's where you would uh, go, I'm gonna go down here to in-kind. So in-kind for tier one only, this is um, kind of an important part. It's kind of a stickler. Uh, if claiming in kind is part of the match, the total must at least match or be greater than the amount included in, the, in the allowable in kind towards the match budget category. So basically what that means, if you want to put $500 here in the budget as part of your match, you need $500 here in your total in kind. Uh, so whether it's under rental or travel or marketing, advertising, other you know personal personnel. Uh, you would need at least 500 here to order to claim 500 here in your in the income section. Uh, and then again, you can't request more than $4,000 for the NDC grant amount request. And then uh, and, and under expenses, you would need at least $5,000 in order to claim the full 4,000 for the grant. Okay, uh, work samples and summary of achievements. So this is very important. And it's a little bit different than prior years uh, and how we're submitting work samples. We're only submitting work samples for artists or artist groups that are you are currently going to be working with on the proposal. So we're not uh, requesting any uh, work samples or resumes from uh, artists from the past uh, applications or past projects that you have done. So, uh, so if they are already selected or uh, you can uh, submit up to two uh, artists or artist groups, work samples, and summary of, of achievement. So you need both. Uh, so if you are working with um, a musician for a concert, uh, you would uh, have a summary of achievements. So it basically I like a bio uh, and uh, you would submit work samples for that artist. And then if you had a, a, a musician and then you also had a, say a performance group of some sort or maybe a theater group, uh, you, that would be two. So uh, yeah, that would be up to two. Uh, so this also includes applicants who are artistic groups. So if you uh, are, uh, let's say you are a nonprofit arts organization who performs uh, band music uh, or uh, you know, jazz music, uh, then you would just submit work samples for your application also. Um, Vanessa, I just wanted to add in there um, about uh, if, if if for some reason uh, you don't know yet who your artists are, which very often is, is a problem, uh, in the earlier section where you were talking about the activity, we say to you, if you don't know, tell us how you're going to select them yes. so that we get a sense of who you're looking at or where that that uh, pool of people is coming from. Um, we totally do understand that sometimes you won't know yet. That's also one reason why we added in the fall deadline too, because you might not want to apply in April. You might want to wait depending on when your event is, and then you would have more information. Okay. Okay, is any questions about that, about the work samples and who you're, oh, how to submit? Okay, all right. Uh, we go into the guidelines here and basically you, 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 know, you can submit work samples for the artist that includes images, video, audio, or written work. Uh, and okay, it also needs- Okay, I'm gonna stop you. So yeah. um, you can use a potential list of artists. Okay, you're gonna have to be careful uh, in that your character limit may, you don't want to use too many examples, right? 
So your character limit may stop you. You want it. This, the question specifically says, if you don't know your artists, how are you going to select them? Mm -hmm. So you can explain that we're, we're looking at past artists. We're looking at these three artists. You're just going to have to watch your character count on it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh... and we can't add any into the work samples then if we don't know for sure. If they're not hired yet, <coughs> I wouldn't. Okay. I, I, am I right, Vanessa, that there there is a spot here to put in past, like a past brochure or a past listing? Uh, no, there isn't. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just for current for current grantees. So if you if you don't know who your artist are that for the proposal then you would talk about how you would be selecting your artists and uh otherwise we're not requesting uh resumes or bios or work samples from uh, uh you know past artist yeah, selections yeah. from maybe an annual festival uh so it's just for current artists for the current proposal uh it, that, and it, that would go in the narrative uh in, under art uh, under arts, arts activity. activity yeah right but yeah. again you, if you have if you are being brief Mm -hmm. and you have a few extra characters you certainly can add in um these two artists performed last year we haven't made the decision yet yeah so it's just yeah, looking so, at your character yeah thing. yeah so yeah yeah we ask you who are your artists you know if you know you know some of your artists or you're you're still you know confirming the artists you know this is who we're working with right now we're not it's not confirmed so i, I I would just state simply where you're at. <laughs> we haven't selected artists yet. You know, this is our going to be our, you know, what we think is our selection art, how we're going to select our artists or how we have selected our artists or how we will select our artists. And, uh, or these are the artists that we're working with and this is why we want to work with them. And, uh, and, uh, and, and how and so and, and in any situation, it's good to talk about how you selected your artists and why you want to work with those artists. And then in the uh, work samples here, you can talk a little bit more about, you know, you know, oh, their background and their uh, and their ability, you know, and uh, artistic quality. Uh, and so it. So something to note, you do need a work sample description, uh, you know, and depending on what kind of work samples you are applying, uh, you're submitting, uh, you know, you would look at, you know, what kind of information you need to submit for that work sample here. Uh, there's a, a shift here for this year. We're requesting uh, a maximum of, um, of five images uh, this year instead of 10. Uh, video is, uh, you know, less time. Uh, video, uh, we only we are asking for, you know, what the material is for the panel to review, uh, not, you know, uh, and if you have a, a Vimeo password, if you're doing Vimeo, uh, or you can upload to YouTube. Uh, and uh, and then under audio is the same amount, a maximum of three minutes uh, total. Uh, something to note for video and audio, uh, if you're submitting two samples, you can submit up to two samples. The total amount of those samples can only be three minutes. So it's not three minutes per sample. It's just three minutes total for the video or audio sample. Uh, and then there's written work here, a maximum of three pages. Uh, you can submit a PDF for written work. And then also there's a little blurb here about uh, if you're using a combination of work samples, uh, so one page, so uh, equals one image equals one minute. So you could submit uh, one minute of video uh, and one image and one page of written work, or you can submit two minutes of video and uh, one image. Uh, whatever a combination it is, it has to equal up to three images, pages, or minutes. Uh, and if you have any questions about that while you're submitting your work samples, certainly give me a uh, you know call or write me an email, and uh, we can uh, discuss in, um, you know what you're submitting and, and uh, make sure you're make sure you're within the guidelines here. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons that we looked at those guidelines is is that we were trying to present a more even playing field for all of the applicants, so mm -hmm. that everybody was within a certain framework of what the panel is looking at. And sometimes uh, it's harder, particularly say in a video, but you want to zero in on what highlights the artist the best for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times we were getting a lot of um, community play and a lot, and not enough necessarily on the artists. Okay. 
But again, if we don't have people booked yet, we shouldn't feel guilty that we can't. Okay. Yeah, but, so but you know, address you know, it in your narrative, right? Yes, it's, it. that's the most important. The panel will, will be like, okay, well, they don't have artists yet, but how are they going to select their artists? Is it a community, you know, process? You know, are we inviting the community to uh, submit applications? Is it uh, mm -hmm. internal process, uh, you know, through recommendations? Uh, you know, what type of process are you going through to get to your artists? Uh, you know, and uh, that's that would be the very, you know, the most important information that the panel, you know, would mm -hmm. consider when you're looking at it. Uh, I, you know, and then, and then of course you don't have to submit work samples if you don't have artists, you know, selected. <laughs> if you do mention artists in your narrative, though, it would be required for you to submit work samples and a summary of artistic achievements uh, for those artists uh, that you are talking about in your narrative. Uh, so it. So it aligns with your narrative. You would sim submit those samples for those artists you're working with and uh, discussing in your narrative. Uh, okay. Any other questions? All right. All right. Uh, you also uh, required a board list and project personnel re resumes. Uh, if you are fiscally sponsored, uh, we would require additional pa page of background information for each each uh, advisory uh, committee me member for that, um, sorry, board <laughs> list or advisory committee. So if you are a fiscally sponsored group, then you would uh, uh, submit some additional information about your uh, ad advisory uh, committee. Yes. Can you respond that to, for that to Anita? Yeah, how, how does, uh, uh, what, what sort of additional information are, are you looking for other than, because uh, I know we do the, the pro, the, personnel resumes for for mm -hmm. some folks and and then we have the board list mm -hmm. what, so it would be the this would be the the list that would be for your you know for your organization, organization. uh if you are uh i guess that would be kind of uh i think yeah. it would just be i i, I mean you are they are a nonprofit, so they're not a fiscal. They're they're using a fiscal sponsor because they're not a not a five hundred one. Yeah, so honestly, I think it would yeah. be you would put your board list in. You put your board list in. Okay. But yeah, you put your okay. board list in. Yeah, if you're yeah. not, if you, you are incorporated, so that the for yeah. fiscal sponsored groups are unincorporated, you know, they, oh, okay. they, they don't necessarily have roles or bylaws uh, that, you know, talk about, you know, you know, what, what their members are doing <laughs> for the organization. So, yeah. uh, if, so it's, so we request additional information about that background and, you know, how they are supporting that, that project, that activity and, uh, their roles in the organization. So, uh, as a as advisory committee, mm -hmm. uh, so it, Vanessa, as a, yeah? I just want to, um, we're, we're, we're got about, we're getting, I know we're kind of yeah. getting late here. So here's our, you know, project personnel resumes. And then again, we need determination letters, you know, you know, we need uh, proof that you are, you know, a 501c3 or a nonprofit corporation or public entity. That is the end of the, of the, of the guidelines. And so do we want to just move on to a little bit to logging on and looking at the application a little bit, how to apply? Or should I, we go straight I think to questions? What would, be, what would be really helpful right now is, is if you all could show your face and let's go out of sharing and let's answer some direct questions, because I think for the most part, uh, we have repeat applicants. So I just okay. want to double check. Okay. So, so the next phase would be going into the application. So I'll For stop sh sharing. Okay. Right. If anyone has a question and does want to see that, then you just let me know. Okay. And All right. Moving on to any open discussion so questions can you about. You guys show yeah. your face and uh, except for. Except for the, the camera person who can't help. Sorry. uh vicky are you there yeah are you uh, do you have a camera uh let's see there yep. we go there, go. <laughs> there you are you've got the best curlers mm. i love it <laughs> um and ashton you don't have a camera correct we can't get this video to work okay don't worry about it Okay, but uh, Ashton, have you, have you applied before the Grand Forks Children's Museum? Doesn't believe 
doesn't believe so. Okay. So then ideally it would benefit you to have a conversation with Vanessa directly for sure. So if, if this is your first time and to just to get some feedback, okay? Uh, okay. Do you guys have questions? Anita, no. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Linda, Vicki? No. No. All right. Because you've been in the system, you know how it works. Uh, you've gotten grants. Um, Laurel, have you gotten a grant before? I yeah. think 15, 25 years, maybe. I'm not sure. Ah, uh, okay. So it's you somewhere may, between you lots may of them. want to connect. But they've changed. A lot of things mm -hmm. have changed Absolutely. as far as the format. So you mm -hmm. might want to connect with Vanessa and really just get a sense of um, what's going on going on and and get a little guidance if you need it and and it looks like uh um you're going to be reached out to by the grand forks children's museum okay and laurel you should talk to vanessa too and anita you've done it you know i i guess i would say do you think the online system it's easier than it used to be mm -hmm. yes Yes, much more. So we all think it's easier than it used to be, and we every year continue to try to improve it. Um, and I guess the only other thing I would say too is um, check it out early, and then connect with Vanessa so she can offer some good assistance. Uh, we really do want to be as helpful as we can. Um, the the one thing I want to address because both Vicky and Linda are are on the call, particularly toward Mid State Porcelain Arts Guild. But the trick here is, is again, it's not about teaching or education, but it's about every single community event that happens around that. That is eligible. So the teaching of the class is not, but the display is eligible, the community coming together is eligible, all that is eligible, but just not teaching. Again, and no, no, no little people, no children teaching. So if we have a, uh, at our fair and our Wells County Fair, three stages and one of the acts is more of a teaching for us for a certain crowd is that then we just couldn't allow that part well, to be part of the uh so remember budget? remember that you uh you get a certain amount of money up to four thousand dollars right so if your budget um perhaps may not cover the fee for that particular right. group. Right. But but I, I but I would say if they're doing a public performance mm -hmm. and there are other people there like moms and dads and grandparents then it's a public performance. Okay. It doesn't it's just somebody who's doing you're teaching children. That's mm -hmm. not what we can do. We we have one of the artists that um is is teaching on how to use uh, the pottery uh, wheel but it's also I mean there's oh, a lot of people that are just watching it absolutely you know so it's it's kind of a little bit of teaching in it but no, no, no but it but you're teaching at a fair yeah. that's in a community in open environment and again there right. are parents and grandchildren and and yeah. grandparents and, okay. and adults there too yeah okay And if some of our, we we typically have always had the Wells County uh, free stages as a walk by audience and it's, there's no admission, no charges, anything like that. There are a couple of the events that um, some of the people on the board want to charge for. I don't, that wouldn't be a problem, would it? Because you can still have entrance fees, right? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, part of your 
budget will show income that comes from, from that. ticket sales or exactly. Okay. Okay. Anyone else have good questions? I think one of the things when I'm looking at older, um, I mean, how we used to do it before and, and how the grant has changed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's, there's places where I feel like in order to answer the question, I can't even remember which ones it would be now until I, I'm doing it. But sometimes I need more space in one um, questions answers than in another one and then another one I have a whole lot more room so and I will tell you that we cut down on the character count yeah because mm -hmm. we're really asking you to focus and we're mm -hmm. really asking you to be brief okay so if you run into trouble call Vanessa yeah yeah, panelists read a lot of applications, and the the clearer and more concise, more concise you can be, it's appreciated mm -hmm. on their end. That you be like, okay, they're answering the the criteria, they're addressing, you know, all all the things I need to look at, and uh, you know, that's really, you know, where I, you know, I I give a lot of feedback in that direction, you know, <laughs> you know, answer the answer the criteria answer the questions uh and, and don't stray too much <laughs> okay answer the question like mm -hmm. what i was talking to somebody today and somebody said you know one rule of grant writing is keep it keep it simple stupid kiss <laughs> answer the question okay <laughs> will help okay okay all right we want to be respectful of your time any other questions Okay, go forth and conquer. Yeah, well, thanks you everyone for being here. And uh, thank you. And uh, give me thank a call you. if you need help. Vanessa is very helpful. You get in touch with her. Thank you, Ashton, for being here. We appreciate and everybody else who's here who we can see. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, take good care. Mm -hmm.